Welcome back. Oscar's hands have been stolen. That sounds weird when you say it out loud. But we have to try and find a way to get them back. And we've already seen that we can't get in through the front door, nor can we get in through the mine because it's too dark. Maybe that platform that we could get to with the big robot can be of help. Let's try that out. Wonder what this guy wants with Oscar's hands. Without the rest of an automaton, I would think they are not that useful, but what do I know? I could be wrong. Or maybe he has an automaton and only needs the hands? I mean, there are other automatons here, presumably. Considering Hans was here and we saw how he has made some, like this big one. Definitely don't need Oscar's hands for that. Alright, so we have this window, which is blocked by sheet metal. But we now have metal shears. That seems to have done the trick. I would be very careful with that. The edges of that are going to be razor sharp. Um, Alright, I guess this is a way into the factory. I can't go that way. Or not. Alright, we can see the inside of the factory. Can we break this glass? I don't know, it might be like reinforced or something. No smoking. Sounds like a good idea. This is not really helping, is it? Anything on these shells? Hmm. Just this weird looking spark plug? Maybe it has something to do with the thing that I said could be a generator in the mine, so... That's worth checking out, I guess. Doesn't look like there's anything else here. Would have made more sense if this was actually the entrance into the building. But no, it's only a way to get that spark plug thing. Which means we need to return the robot to its original spot again, so we can get down and go back into the mine. At least this part of the game is nowhere near as bad with all the walking back and forth over huge areas as Barockstadt was. And if you already know what to do, you can obviously cut this short a little bit, because there's no reason to stop at the middle part the first time, nor is there any reason to go into the mine before you have the, um, the spark plug. But you know me, I like to do things the logical way. It's kind of funny, because... Oh, don't go. Yes? Hey, can you hear me this time? Yes, I can hear you just perfectly, Dan, but I can't talk to you now. I'm in a real hurry. I wanted to say sorry. I know I wasn't very understanding last time. I've been feeling a bit bad about it. 
Okay, you're a real sweetheart, but I've got to leave you now. I'm not angry with you, so don't worry. I've just got to catch up to someone, and quick. But Kate, Kate, this is really important. I'll call you back, Dan. I'm sorry. Somehow I have a hard time feeling sorry for Dan. It's kind of funny because, um, obviously I've played this game before, way back, but before recording, I... I just run through it walking, uh, using a walkthrough to remind myself of where everything is and what I'm supposed to be doing and make some notes about where I want to do things in a different order. But while doing that I just skip all the dialogue and cutscenes so I kind of don't know what's going on. I mean I remember it a little bit obviously. But it's kind of funny to now then play it like, oh that's why you need to do that. Um, let's see. Well. It's the only thing we can try, so let's see if this spark plug works with the uh, um, generator thing. That's going to work. Oh, it looks like I screwed that up by right-clicking again. That seems to fit there. Um, that is. I don't want to touch it in case I break it. That is not how a spark plug works. I guess it's just an electric generator, but uh, <laughs> that is not a spark plug. I wonder if that's a mistranslation or if it was just mislabeled in the first place. Alright, but it did turn the lights on. Now we can see that there are rats in this mine. Also a screen that is on, but does not seem to be getting any signal. This is what we saw in the little flashback with the foil cylinder, which I guess Kate would not have seen. We saw automatons working here. It's a tiny mine, honestly. <laughs> if this is the end. Looks like another elevator. Alright. Looks like we've made it in. Is this the door? That door is locked. It is. And we can open it? Does that mean we can go outside that way? We can. Shortcut. Not that we need it, but still. Um, wow. Is that a pipe organ? That seems like an interesting thing to put in a, uh, Factory. Also something we saw in the... Cinematic for the... Voice Cylinder. It's very impressive looking. I'm betting this is Hans Vorlberg's work. And yeah, it definitely is, because it has an uh, automaton organist. We can't try to play the organ, which is very sad. But this one has hands, so I guess that's not what Oscar's hands were for, un unless these are Oscar's hands. Hmm. Doesn't seem like we can take them in either case. There is a screwdriver. Remember that that screwdriver was here. I will refer to it later. Um, alright, not sure what to do with all of this. Screwdriver could be useful anyway. Um, let's see. Hopefully it isn't dangerous to walk around in this abandoned factory. 
Well, not entirely abandoned. Presumably our hand thief is in here somewhere. Alright, not an awful lot we can do on this screen. And we can't go further right, nor does the screen scroll. So, you actually can't go further right. There is this ladder, but it seems to be blocked by this metal plate. Which says something in Cyrillic, so I can't read it. I mean, honestly, you could probably climb around this, but why bother? We have a screwdriver, so we can actually just undo it. I'm assuming that if the thief went up this ladder, he just climbed around it. Doesn't look like it would be that hard. Alright, well that worked. see the organ from here. What's this? It seems this monorail is controlled from somewhere else. It's a monorail? If you say so, I can't tell. I think we may have found our culprit was watching these monitors over here. Hey you! Who are you? Careful, I'm warning you. I'm not afraid of you, okay? What do you want? Why did you do that? There must be some misunderstanding. Because you reckon theft is all about misunderstanding, do you? Give me my hands back, now! Your hands? And what are those on the ends of your arms? I can explain everything to you. You see, I'm no thief. You broke into my train, assaulted my driver, mutilated him, and stole his hands. Apart from that, you are not a thief. I have not stolen them, miss. Only borrowed them for a while. You've got to be joking. I'm not joking with you, miss. I would never take such liberties. They belong to Oscar, my automaton engineer. Why did you steal them? They are extraordinary, real mechanical wonders. I would never have been capable of designing such hands myself. Never! Such workmanship, such precision crafting. It is... It is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And just because you like them, you decided to steal them? I have only borrowed them, little missy. Temporarily, you understand? Of course, I shall return them to you when I don't need them anymore. You can... Excuse me? You see, these hands are all I need to complete my plan. At last, I can finish off my automaton pianist and fulfill my dreams. Everything is now in place. You see, I have converted this old, useless, stupid factory into a magical theater. As you can see, the furnaces, piping, chimney stacks, they've all been converted into one gigantic organ. I will be able to accompany the world's greatest living singer. Now, all I need is her... <gasps> Um, okay. <laughs> this guy sounds like a lunatic. Also, Oscar's description of him makes a lot more sense now. He seems to have some weird thing on his head. And I guess the organ was not built by Hans, but by this guy? Why wasn't it in the, f the flashback with the, the voice cylinder then? Hmm. I'm not sure I understand. But even if we take it at face value and that he built the um, organ and the automaton organist, it seems he needed Oscar's hands to complete it. Which I guess means that the hands we saw were in fact Oscar's hands. So can we just go take them and, and leave? Because 
Regardless of all this guy's talk about borrowing, uh, we're on a mission. I don't really want to wait for whatever it is you want to do, and I also don't trust you. Let's see if we can uh, talk this guy into giving the hands back. Although I doubt it. Who are you? Sergei Borodin, the director of the industrial city of Komkoltsgrad. Or what is left of it, at least. But who are you, for that matter? And why have you stopped in my station without authorization? I didn't choose to stop in your station, but my train has a technical problem. My name is Kate Walker, and I'm an American lawyer. It is very kind of you to come so far just to visit this place. Uh, I repeat again, I never intended to stop here. I'm on a business trip. I'm a lawyer, goddammit. Right. And what brings you here? Like I said, a stupid mechanical hitch. Is he even paying attention? I'm sorry, I can't make heads or tails out of your story at all. Without my engineer's hands, I'm stuck here, you see? Everything I have designed, all that I have invented, everything is for her. Do you realize her? Oh, to hear her sing one more time here in my factory! But who is she? Who are you talking about? Helena. The one and only Helena Romansky. Her voice is so pure, like an angel. One day she came here to Komkoltsgrad. She sang here, you know. When our industrial city was in its heyday. Oh, so long ago now. It was almost unreal. It was magical. I remember it like it was yesterday. Then, later, a long time later, she saved my soul. She saved my life and gave it meaning. When I was told that the mining program was to be abandoned, that this industrial city was consigned to oblivion, that I, its director, would from then on be nothing but a guardian of these rusting remains of a bygone age. That is when I first formed my plan to bring Helena Romansky back to this factory. But this time, she would sing for me, and me alone. And is she okay about this? Sure, sure. Once she finds out that I have done all this for her, when she realizes how I converted this vast network of pipes and tubes to create one of the most impressive organs ever made, then, you know, this was no small achievement, miss. Once, Molten iron flowed through here. Now there wafts only beautiful melodies. But then I realized I had to make an automaton pianist. I began to despair that I would never create hands that were intricate enough. But then you arrived. So lucky, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, that must have been a happy coincidence for someone around here. So... When will this Madame Romansky come back? When do I get my hands back? I don't know. Maybe someone should look for her. Tell her. Hey, why don't you go? The quicker you bring her back, the sooner you can carry on your business trip. Now, isn't that a good idea? No, no it's not. And you no, promise that once Helena has sung, you will give me back my automaton's hands? I promise, my dear. You have my solemn word. Well, I guess I'm going to have to believe you. Where should I go hunting for this singer, then? I have no idea. But for a woman of the world like yourself, finding her should pose no obstacle. Helena Romansky was a world celebrity, you know. I have collected many objects, souvenirs of her that I keep in a room. A shrine to her glory. It's like her own personal museum in a way. You should take a look. (laughs) 
This whole story is completely nuts. Yeah, I agree. We're just going with this? This guy converted an entire factory, then assaulted, mutilated our engineer, Oscar, and stole his hands, all for a woman who he doesn't even know how to find, who probably doesn't even want to come back here, regardless of what he's saying, that he seems to be completely obsessed with. Why are we trusting him? This guy's crazy. I guess we have no choice. I guess there's just no way we can take those hands without his help. Maybe it's really complicated to detach them. And we just don't have the ability to do that. I don't know. I guess we just have to help him for some reason, if we can. And what if I helped you to make some other hands just for your automaton? Why should life be complicated when I already have what I need? And I very much doubt you are in any position to create such a perfect pair of hands. No, but if you gave us back the hands, we could go find Hans, who probably could make you another pair of hands. How about that? You mentioned an automaton pianist, didn't you? Where did you find it? I pieced it together myself, my dear. Except for the hands, that is. I admit that I underestimated the intricacy of this part of the design. A pianist's hands are very important, after all. But enough. Now he has a perfect set of hands. Your passion amazes me. Have you designed any other automatons here? No. Clockwork mechanisms do not interest me as such. I simply needed a robot capable of accompanying Helena Romanski on my huge organ. That's what she said. I adapted an existing model, a reject automaton secretary. I reconstructed it and adapted it to this new function. An existing model, you say? Did you ever know Hans Vorlberg? He was a kind of mechanical genius, like yourself. Hans Vorlberg? Yes. Or maybe... I don't know. No. No. Sure, I understand. The number of automatons still functioning in this abandoned complex is amazing, though. My dear, one thing is for sure. For many years, I have been totally alone here. If that man ever came to this city, he left long, long ago. I guess we kind of already knew that. When you stepped on the train, you were trespassing on private property. Everything in this city, sweet lady, belongs to the state. And to all intents and purposes, the state in this city is me. My train is not a part of this factory. And besides, we never would have stopped here in the first place if its engine hadn't needed winding. Well, as long as your train is at this station, it may be requisitioned and used for industrial purposes. Out of the question. And I forbid you to do so. Maybe I won't have to. Perhaps we can maybe come to some kind of agreement, my sweet lady. I hope so. And fast. I guess you can argue that we are the ones trespassing. It's not like we had a choice, though, and at least we're not stealing stuff. Also, his talk about everything here belonging to the state. Did, did anybody tell him that the Soviet Union collapsed? Like, 11 years before this game. Doesn't feel like it. Please excuse me. I have to go now. So be it. Okay, well, I guess we're doing this. We must really have no other opportunity, because I would not trust this guy uh, as far as I could throw him.
he lowered this room over here, which I guess is his shrine to to Helena. Oh, lovely. Yep, that's definitely a shrine. This is uh, definitely giving me a, a lot more confidence in his mental health. This guy is completely obsessed. Bunch of dresses that I presume she wore. Looks like she's older now. This is just insane. Why are we trusting this guy? I guess we just have no choice. Alright, uh, let's see if we can find any hints to where she might be. Newspaper clip clippings. Young Helena Romanski's crystal clear voice moves amateurs and professionals alike gathered for the 9th Voix d'Or festival in Brussels. The young Russian soprano was the revelation of the event. She's an exceptionally talented singer, and at the tender age of 20, Helena looks to have a very promising career ahead of her. Helena Romanski's finest numbers are collected here on this golden disc, millions of copies of which are being sold around the world. world. The voice, Helena Romans Romanski, okay. Comrade Helena Romanski sings for the people. Her series of, re of recitals with piano performed in the factories of our great republic. After Kiev, our diva arrives at Komkoltsgrad. Ravishing Helena is seen here with the factory director, Comrade Borodin, and several admirers. I guess that's our guy, who already had his weird headpiece, although it's kind of unclear from the picture, I guess. Helena Romanski's success in Europe is assured. The great Helena Romanski, our nation's glory, appears and triumphs every night on Europe's most famous stages. Following from Milan, Paris, and Vienna, Helena Romanski gave an exceptional recital in which her voice was even more powerful and moving than ever. Helena Romanski at this point is at the peak of her artistic career, and her recitals that year are exceptional. The high point in testimony to this greatness is her unforgettable importation of Rigoletto, sung with her grained fr friend, the Russian tenor Frank Malkovich? Let us not forget that the latter has recently decided to pursue his career in the United States. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait just a minute. Isn't Frank Malkovich the opera singer that Kate's mom has been hanging out with? That is one hell of a coincidence. It does give us a lead into finding her, I guess. Yesterday evening, adoring crowds filled out the Bolkoi to say their fond farewells to Helena Romanski, their diva, making her last ever public appearance. Romanski revolutionized lyrical artistry, and her name has already passed into posterity. Through the well of emotion, her fatigue and illness, she merely managed to utter a tearful thank you. I guess she doesn't perform anymore. Hopefully she wants to get come out of retirement for this guy. This plan is getting more and more crazy the more I learn about it. There's also some letters, I guess, that he tried to send to Helena, but it looks like they did not um, reach the intended recipients. In Moscow, I guess that's she no longer lives there. It's a good thing too. I don't know where we are in relation to Moscow, but I don't know if I want to make that detour. Komkolgrad, June 15, 1997. So that's about five years ago from this game. Dear Helena, pray forgive me for such familiarity of tone. I have written to you so often and for so long that I feel I have come to know you intimately through my correspondence even though she presumably never replied. I hope if my previous letters have reached you that you share this feeling. I am writing to you at this address for the 112th time. I hope that one day you will return there and you will find one of my letters. This one, maybe. 
I can only hope. It's just that I have so much to say to you, so much to share. My work progresses well. As I wrote before, the hardest part was to put theory into practice. But I am gradually finding solutions to the problems, and have managed to add a whole host of fine adjustments. The grand organ is now nearly complete. I can't wait for you to see it. Madame, I have transformed my factory into a crown, and I hope that you will be its jewel. It is a magnificent stage, one worthy of your talent and beauty. Helena, I feel so close to you, and you alone are all I think about. The more time that goes by, the more certain I become that one day you will visit me in this factory that is dedicated entirely to you. I have immense hope in my heart, and I am awaiting your acceptance of my invitation. Yours in faith and devotion, Sergei Borodin. Okay, this guy makes um, Stan from the Eminem song look sane. He is like this close to, you know, committing a crime to, to get her to sing here. Actually, I guess he already stole our hands, so. <laughs> he just does not seem sane to me. But I guess we have no choice. Destiny has cheated me by forcing me to decide upon the woman that I idolize or the hands of an automaton. Sorry. <laughs> this just really reminds me of that Futurama episode. Fry may not use the devil's hands to play the organ, but he does use them for music, so it's kind of reminiscent. Anyway, we found a lead. Frank Malkovich, who, by some miraculous coincidence, our mom knows. So I guess we should make a call to find out if he can help us locate the current whereabouts of Helena Romansky. But we'll have to do that in the next video.